Welcome to Football Forecast Weekly, the most popular football program in America, featuring Dennis Tobler, Trip Mitchell, and Fred Wallen. Welcome, everyone, to Football Forecast Weekly. My name's Dennis Tobler, and it's great to be back with you again this week. We had a tremendous week last weekend, and we look forward to another big weekend this weekend. As executive producer of Football Forecast Weekly, I have to fill in the spots when somebody's out of town. And it's bye week in the NFL, and it's bye week for Trip Mitchell. He's missed two weeks now with his European tour, and uh, we'll see if we give him a permanent bye when he comes back or not. So I'm going to step in as the host and the an an analysis, some analysis on these football games this weekend. And between me and my guest, the one and only, the best sports radio broadcaster in the country, the widely known star of Sports Overnight America on Sirius XM and SportsByline.com, Mr. Fred Wallen. Fred, welcome to the show. Well, welcome for, for everybody out there. Happy that you guys are watching, you gals are, are watching, and there's so much to talk about. Let's get to it. There is so much to talk about. I want to touch a little bit on the, the college ranks to start with because of the transfer portal has made everything different in the college world. And you certainly don't know the tackles and the defensive backfield, et cetera, that have used the transfer portals. So some of these teams have really risen and some of them have really failed. One thing I want to say is the first show of the year I predicted USC may make it to the playoffs this year. I'm sticking with that prediction is they're five and oh now are or five and oh or six no five and oh right six and, and also I want to add this not only are they uh, five and oh so is UCLA five and oh so the Pac-10 everybody looks at it as a weak secondary conference I have news for everybody back east if Alabama's and the Georgia's and the Clemson's played teams like the Pac-10 conference plays every week they wouldn't win either I mean, if you watch the poor teams these big schools play, they're favored by 30 each time. What can you get from that? This year, it's going to change around. I'm sticking with USC. What do you see in the college world, Fred? Well, both USC and UCLA are 6-0. 6-0. And, and, and I don't know. The last time UCLA has been 6-0 is 2005. However, uh, they're not going to lose this week. I guarantee it because they're not playing. But then they got to, they have to go to Eugene against uh, Oregon, homecoming for Chip Kelly. Then we don't know. Uh, and again, I, if you take a look at UCLA's schedule, not too strong. Uh, Utah is the best team they play. Other than that, Washington's average. Uh, the other ones are basically a joke. So that 6-0 and might be a a mirage and we'll find out when they go up to Oregon and it's raining we'll see what happens in Eugene it'll be a tough game as far as USC is concerned I agree with you they can score on anybody but the downside is anybody can score on them so there just might be a stoppage somewhere along the way we will find out uh, uh, I agree with you maybe the Pac-12 a little bit stronger than uh, a lot of people think, and maybe not. We'll find out the rest of the way. However, my weekend last week was made on one thing. Brian Kelly led his LSU Bengal Tigers to a mere 40-13 to 13 loss against Tennessee. He did it again. And I have to say, either his agent is a genius or the people at LSU are the opposite of that because he, I think he signed for – $95 million over like 10 years. Folks, Notre Dame made Kelly. Cincinnati, he was lucky that one year, and then he ran out on the uh, on, on the Bearcats before they went to the bowl game. He's a very average guy who's now $95 million in the bank over 10 years. They lose 40 to 13. If you lose 14 to 13, okay. You can't lose 40 to 13. If you know what you're doing, Tennessee's a good club, I'm not arguing there, but not for you to 13. But it made my weekend because I have despised him ever since. Uh, well, a long story. We've talked about it here on the show before. But Brian Kelly is what he is. Ninety five million dollars rich. 
Well, I'm glad you're happy to see that he got beat. And yeah, they're headed nowhere at LSU, but it just points out what I've been saying. These teams on the East Coast are not as good as the East Coast press presents them to be. That's all there is to it. There was one blowout game early in the year where Georgia beat Oregon, and it threw everything out of Kilder. But when I look at the rating polls this week, and I see teams like Clemson and all of them ahead of USC, that's bull, okay? So all of you people on the East Coast, quit betting so much money on the East Coast teams. You're giving us a gold mine out here taking the points. All right, it's time to take a look at the NFL now. And before we do, we – we did mention earlier that it starts the bye weeks for the NFL this week. And this week, the Detroit Lions, the Houston Texans, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Tennessee Titans are all on bye week this week. And no one needs it more than Houston and Las Vegas. And Houston moved ahead of Las Vegas in the standings. They're 1-3-1 one, and one now. And the Raiders are 1-4. and four. So there you go. Every week, we we try to pick the worst team in the league. And this week, I have a new one. It's not the Raiders, but I have a new one. So let's get on to the games and, and start with Tampa Bay on the road to take on Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is, they started at six and a half last week. After last week's game, jumped to eight. I seen them at eight and a half this morning. Uh, Tampa Bay is going to roll all over Pittsburgh. The young quarterback from Pittsburgh, you can't put a, a, a young quarterback like that up against a defense like the Buccaneers. Eight, they were favored by last week and did not cover, even though they were way ahead. I'm speaking of the Bucs. The Bucs will this week get way ahead too, but Pittsburgh has no way to catch up. And Pittsburgh is on the down and out. I'm telling you right now, they have no talent. That freshman quarterback they have is not going to cut the mustard in the NFL this year. So I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Minus the eight points, totals 43. What you say? Well, I think they'll score a touchdown here. They didn't score a touchdown last week. Uh, Kenny Pickett, I think, uh, will improve. I mean, you can't ask a guy midway through a season to automatically turn on. I think he'll be a, a good enough quarterback in this league. It just won't be necessarily this season or the very end of this season. Tomlin says it starts with him, and it does. He's the coach. A little question about that. I can't disagree. I mean, Tampa's going to cover the eight-and-a-half-point spread. The only question is, will Pittsburgh uh, score enough to get that uh, over uh, a winning side? And probably yes. So probably Tampa and the over would be my side on this also. Okay. I, uh, I have another uh, team from that division, the Cincinnati Bengals, on the road to take on the New Orleans Saints. The Bengals have – move from one to two off of their performance this last week. The Saints have uh, dropped a little bit in in uh, the public's eyes. However, I believe the Saints are playing it perfectly well with Andy Dalton and, and uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name, uh, uh, switching off a quarterback, uh, the running three quarterback. Touch yeah. three, touch yeah. three touchdowns. Yeah, Hill and and uh, Andy Dalton work together good as a quarterback to tandem for the New Orleans Saints. Cincinnati's just too good, though. Joe Burrow's good enough to get some wins. They've had some tough breaks this year. They're going to need a win on the road, and they're just too good. I'm going to lay the two, take Cincinnati. The total's 44, hasn't moved. So in this one, it's kind of what you think the new quarterbacks are going to do for you. No, I, I, again, I think uh, Burrow, one of the top quarterbacks uh, in this league, he started slowly this year, played well, I guess, uh, or better against Baltimore. Ravens have a good defense. And they were unlucky to lose the last second uh, field goal by, uh, and the USA Today calls him the GOAT, the greatest uh, of all time. His kicker is concerned, and Justin Tucker, I don't think there's any question. And so it was a great uh, game on uh, on Sunday night. Um, so I'll, I'll – agree with you. I, I think Cincinnati, the Bengals, and I, I think uh, um, uh, Burrow will improve as it goes along. Remember now, he's playing without uh, Higgins. I, know, I don't know when Higgins is going to come back, and that makes a difference. Higgins, second, their second guy behind Chase, really. Uh, Boyd's going to get a couple of passes here. Uh, yeah, I think they'll cover, and uh, so I'm going to go with Burrow, who uh, uh, you know, basically uh, we, of course he played at LSU, 
and of course uh, the, the, the sort of a homecoming and that sort of a thought. So we'll see what happens. I think he'll uh, play a good game, and uh, I think Cincinnati will win. I agree. I think that's a big part of it. He's going home to LSU, and and Joe Burrows is going to go show his stuff against the New Orleans Saints. And uh, I think that they will cover this one handily, too. Look, I think the Saints are going to get better as the year goes on. But in this game here, the Bengals are far too good. I noticed on the board this week, last week we were talking about a lot of road favorites, a lot of high number favorites. And uh, I did well last weekend, mixing and matching. This week we find ourselves with a lot of tiny favorites. So meaning both sides has an opportunity to win. Let's move on down to the next one, Jacksonville takes on the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are two-point home team favorites. The total's 42. I'll let you have first crack. Well, uh, the Colts were very lucky to win in the ugly game last Thursday night, maybe one of the ugliest games that anybody has seen in 50 or 60 years in the National Football League, uh, seven field goals in that 12-9 win they were very lucky that they, they were lucky from the point of view too that uh Hackett is uh Denver's coach uh, because uh, he gave it away I mean with a not with a folks if you got to go back to this because I have to bring it up you got a 9-6 lead there's less than two minutes to go you have the ball on the Colts 11 yard line they don't have any timeouts left I don't care if you kneel twice and then go for a field goal then you're up 12-6 but you can't throw a pass in that circumstance and basically give the other side a shot. And of course they threw the Russell threw the interception and they come back and tie it. And then they win in overtime 12, nine. So uh, the bottom line is uh, <laughs> this is a crazy year. There are new coaches. There are coaches who shouldn't be coaches. And uh, certainly uh, Nate Hackett, one of them, Josh McDaniels and uh, your uh, neck of the woods, uh, you know, he was a failure at Denver. He's going to be a failure here. Why he didn't, why he went for two, I, 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 there's, no, there's no answer for that. Impossible. The bottom line, uh, uh, you have a better kicker uh, in, in this case. Kansas City, Budker is out. So you're going with Matthew Wright, who, who kicked the 59 yarder, but he also missed his short one. So you've got Carlson, one of the best field goal kickers. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, he's got a big streak going. Go for the tie. If it goes to extra, it goes to overtime, you've got the advantage. You've got the better kicker. But no, he goes for two, and they lose 30-29. I don't know how I got started talking about that, but, but we have to talk about the fact that coaches make a difference. In this case, uh, there are coaches who can coach, and there are coaches who can't, and we got to talk about that. We really do, and uh, you take it I from agree. there. I agree, and I think that there were several coaches that aren't capable of making those kind of decisions in the league, and that was one of them right there. Those swings like that can kill the team's momentum for the rest of the year. Denver losing to Indianapolis, one of the worst teams in the league, is going to put them behind the eight ball for sure in their division. It's going to be a battle between them and the Raiders, who finishes in the bottom spot down there. Anyway, I'm going to take Indianapolis at home in this spot. They're playing well enough. Maybe they're buoyed a little bit by uh, their win last week. They will be at home, and that's the only reason I'm taking them, because the Lions, too, and I think three will be the least they'll win by. And and, and Jacksonville, again, nine straight times now, they've lost to one of the worst teams in the NFL, the Houston Texans. I don't think there's an explanation for that. Again, except it's, it's a crazy National Football League. You know, we've gone through 30-something percent of the season already, and it's it's not getting straight. So it should be interesting. I agree with you. I'm going to take uh, uh, the, the Colts at home. And all, for the same reason, they're, they're, they're at home. Ryan might have a better game than he had last week. But, uh, again, it's a game that nobody is going to really care about. But uh, – I'll take the Colts in this circumstance. Well, let's squeeze one more in here before the break and see if we can get it done quick because it's not very interesting. It's the New England Patriots at the Cleveland Browns. The Patriots used their third string quarterback last week to destroy, which blew everybody out of the contest here in Las Vegas. And the Cleveland Browns are simply pathetic. That's all. 
They're simply pathetic. They they tried to win the game with a kicker who was kicked off of a team earlier this year for losing a game by missing a field goal. The guy missed two in this game. They missed the win. That was a complete turnaround. Cleveland should have had a win in the win column. And once again, the coach kept them from having it happen. In this game, Cleveland's home three-point favorites over New England. I'm not playing against New England. I'm not going to play Cleveland Browns. The total is 42-and-a-half. I'm going to play over 42-and-a-half. Again, I can't disagree with you. I really can't. Uh, you, uh, the Browns were unfortunate to lose on, the, on that last-second missed field goal. That uh, <laughs> I, I, I uh, Again, you talk about a coach, Brandon Staley, uh, Let's go, Brandon. Uh, the bottom line, he gives the g- game away, basically, and they missed the field goal. I, I, it's wow. hard to believe. He didn't kick from his own 46-yard line, right. which, meant, which meant all they needed, as they got, was like 10 yards for a really good shot at the field goal, 53, 54 yards, which they missed. But in the National Football League, the odds of making that are probably, what, 70 75%? from 53 these are the best in the world kickers so he gave the he's fortunate because he made an idiotic move and a mistake and if the chargers had lost i what you just said a, a few seconds ago the team in that locker room would be saying oh my god and, and that in fact was keenan allen of course is still out that's exactly what he did say he did write how can we do this we have to punt in that circumstance anyways another game that uh, Again, nobody's going to care about a whole lot. You've got to give the Patriots credit. Third string quarterback. We'll see what happens in this circumstance. I have no opinion whatsoever on this game. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is not playing badly. And uh, by the time Watson comes back, it may not make any difference. Uh, so I'm going to pass on this one. Listen up, football fans. For this week's best bets, call us at 1-888-604-6863. That's 1-888-604-6863. Be a winner. 888-604-6863. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now, 800-923-6956, 800-923-6956, 800-923-6956. That's 800-923-6956. Welcome back, everyone, to Football Forecast Weekly. Let's get down to the Monday night game, a big matchup between the Broncos, who looked terrible last week, and the Chargers, who looked terrible last week. One came away with a bad win, one came away with a bad loss. So the the total on this game started as the Chargers six. It's down to four and a half now. The total started at 47. It's down to 45 and a half now. So the two great quarterbacks that we have in this game seems as though the betters don't think they can put points on the board. What do you think, Fred? Uh, Russell Wilson got a shot in the arm, and I think that'll make a difference. Uh, he's looked horribly uh, pathetic the first part of this season. Uh, again, I'm going to go over. Uh, you've got uh, one of the best young quarterbacks in all of the world in, in Herbert, and then you've got uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, the Chargers do not have much of a defense, so I think Wilson's going to throw two or three touchdowns. And I think from that aspect, that's enough to put it over the 46 or 47 or 48, and you said it dropped to 45, so I'm definitely going over with this one uh, on Monday night. Big bargain here on the over. I see it too. Uh, They're playing it under because of last week's scores. Won't have anything to do with this game. You're right about that. I want to say something about the Chargers and Eckler and give you some credit because you told everybody last week to play Eckler in their fantasy teams, and Eckler went for over 200 yards rushing, people. 
So when Fred Wallen tells you to take somebody on your fantasy team, you better listen to what he says because Eckler ran for 200. Now he may run for 200 again against Denver because Denver doesn't seem to be able to do I don't know. They can stop people, I guess, but I don't know whether they can stop the run. And that's what's going to hurt them. Eckler's going to hurt them because it's going to open up Herbert to throw the ball. So I think the Chargers are going to win. The four and a half drop to four and a half, I think, is a bad drop, too. I'm going to take the Chargers and lay the four and a half at home in this matchup. Denver's going to have to prove it to me. Their coach is terrible. San Diego's coach is terrible. At this point in the game, I don't know what we do, but guess on this Monday night game. But I'm going with uh, with you. I think the best part of it is the over. So we suggest to the to the viewing audience to play the over. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Well, welcome back to Football Forecast Weekly, everyone. I'm Dennis Tobler here with Fred Wallen. We're analyzing this week's NFL games. We're in the uh, sixth week of the NFL season, a third of the way through after this weekend's finished, and we still haven't found the top teams in the league yet. And we're down the schedule point to the uh, Baltimore Ravens and the New York Giants. The Giants come back from London with a great big win over the Green Bay Packers. The Baltimore Ravens just simply not good enough. The Ravens went from six to five on the line. There are five-point road favorites at the Giants. The total moved up from 43 to 45. Fred, your call. I think the Giants are for real. And, uh, and I think the Ravens are for real, and that's not good necessarily. Uh, they win the game against Cincinnati. Harbaugh's liable to uh, make a, a coaching blunder in this circumstance. Brian DeBall has shown already five games into his career that uh, uh, he's an offensive uh, top-notch guy. I'm not going to say wizard, but uh, they're doing some great things uh, uh, with the Giants. Uh, so I'm going to take the points at, at home and uh, take the New Yorkers in this circumstance. Oh, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, I can't believe the Ravens are five-point favorites over the Giants after the Giants just slaughtered Green Bay. Look, the Giants can run the ball, and whatever anybody says in this league, you have to be able to run the ball, and they can run the ball. And the Ravens, I just don't have any trust in Lamar. That's it. I don't. He'll make ten good plays, and he'll make five bad plays. And, uh, yeah, they – I told everybody since the start of the season on this show that Baltimore has the respect of all of the wise guys to get to the Super Bowl. Okay. They were the most bet on team to make it to the Super Bowl. And they may still be one of the top teams to get there, but they're not going to get there. I'll tell you right now, their defense isn't strong enough. And a game like this is going to be a tough game for them to win. We'll watch and see because New York's new coach, really, I, I'm with you, Fred. The New York Giants are a new team, and they're no longer to be considered at the bottom of the league. They have four wins, I believe, and that's quite a few. So we'll we'll stick with the Giants, take the points in this one. Next matchup on the board, the Minnesota Vikings at the Miami Dolphins. We all know the Dolphins quarterback problems. We all know what happened last week with Teddy Bridgewater being pulled out of the game on the first play of the game because of the new protocols. Minnesota, by the way, just keeps chugging along. Last week's line had Miami as a one-point favorite, but when they opened this week, Minnesota moved to a three-point road favorite in this matchup. How do you see it, Fred? No quarterbacks at Miami. Well, Kirk Cousins is playing better than I think a lot of people expected this season, but he's got the wide receivers. And again, Thielen has not had the big afternoon. 
he's bound to have one of those. Now, obviously, Justin Jefferson is their number one guy, but it's not like Thielen can't gain 150 yards uh, in receptions. And that's going to happen one of these weeks, might be this week. So I'm going to take the Minnesota minus uh, the three and uh, it'll go from there. When you're going against a third string quarterback, um, you know, you've got a major advantage. I mean, that's bottom line. I think that number might even go higher as people uh, start thinking about it logically. Uh, he's not a bad guy. I mean, he's played okay last week, but he's third string. And Cousins has been a number one guy out of Michigan State for many years. So I'm taking uh, Minnesota minus the, the three and go from there. Well, you've got an experienced quarterback against somebody that's never played. We don't know what's going to happen with Teddy Bridgewater. These new – protocols for concussions is going to throw everybody for a loop for a while till they get it figured out. I'm going with Minnesota minus three, two in this matchup, and I'm going to play the under 45 and a half. So we're going to go with Minnesota. I can't believe we're picking the same sides. There might be an upheaval this weekend, Fred. <laughs> well, maybe uh, it won't be a hundred percent. Everybody will be very there happy with that. There you go. All right, let's move on to the San Francisco 49ers playing tough ball at the Atlanta Falcons, who really got screwed last week when Tom Brady, the baby of the league, was tackled and they threw a flag and kept Atlanta from getting the ball for one last chance to win that game. And uh, they look to be battling uphill again this week against the 49ers. It opened at six and a half. It's down to five and a half. I'm not sure there'll be much scoring in this game. I'm going to just make it real simple right here. I'm going to take Atlanta plus the five and a half. The 49ers been on the road a couple of weeks in a row here. Atlanta should be upset about what happened last week. I'm taking a flyer and taking Atlanta plus the points. All right, I'll go the other way and take San Francisco. Um, as Jimmy G gets used to his club, I think he'll get better. Uh, he's been on up and out, up and down, uh, certainly so far this year. Uh, uh, the 49ers have a lot of ways to score. They really do. And again, from a fantasy perspective, if you take a look at Tim Mariota, he's not doing a whole lot. So uh, I'm going to take the 49ers to have a maybe an explosion here and score four or five touchdowns. So I'm going to take the 49ers minus the points, and we'll go from there. All right. Finally, we have a disagreement on this show. It's about time. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we are on to the pathetic Carolina Panthers who fired their coach this week and whose quarterback is hurt and out. And they are on the road to play the world champion Rams, no doubt, no less. Line started nine and a half, went to 10, went to 11, probably go to 15. Hell, I don't know. But Carolina don't have a shot in the dark of taking this Rams team down. I mean, this is going to be a blowout. This is my blowout play of the week. The Rams will win by 30. 28 to 30 points. I'm taking the Rams. Well, Rams uh, offensive line is non-existent. Uh, so you got to take that in consideration. Um, Caroline going, I guess, with PJ Walker, who uh, um, and they made the coaching change. And uh, PJ Walker was a good quarterback at Temple. And of course he played for rule at Temple. And that's why they got together here in Carolina. But uh, Stafford's shown me nothing so far. So, but bottom line is, I think I, I, I can't give that kind of a number with the Rams, the way they're playing right now. Uh, they, they, they look horrible against the 49ers. They look horrible last week against the Cowboys. Now you got to give uh, like 10 points. Uh, no, I, I can't do that. So it's a game that uh, uh, may be over, but it's not a strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, and again, you know, sometimes people jump aboard. And everybody says Sean McVay is a Hall of Fame type coach. You know, how many years have been there? Four or five years? Not a Hall of Fame type coach. Even last year when they win the Super Bowl, how many times when they had the lead did he uh, pull off the horses and did he slow things down and he allowed other teams to get into the game? So he's not a Hall of Fame coach. He's going to have a lot of years to prove that as far as I'm concerned. So I, I'm really not a strong opinion one way or the other as far as Carolina. Sometimes you get a new coach. Uh, good things happen. Uh, Wilkes, the new coach now uh, for for the uh, uh, Panthers. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's, it's a game I don't have a strong opinion on one way or the other. Well, we all know that you don't take anything that's favored over 10. So I get your drift on this one. 
Uh, Carolina don't have a shot in the dark here, however, in my opinion. I don't care who that guy is and where he played quarterback. When he goes up against the Rams' defense, he's going to have a mess on his hands. I think the Rams will get it together. I don't see anything, any part of Carolina that's any good. Uh, I think the Rams are going to use this game to get back on track. They're going to score as many times as they can. I agree with you. Their quarterback isn't very good. And they, it, their line better straighten up or they're in for big trouble this year. I think they'll get well in this game. I'm taking the Rams. Well, let's move on down to another questionable game from last week involving a team. The Arizona Cardinals are at Seattle. And Seattle's been playing pretty well on the road, but ended up getting blown out last week. And everybody thought that they could they could handle New Orleans, but they couldn't. Seattle, on the other hand, or Arizona, on the other hand, they were at home and they covered. That's all I can say. They did not win the game, but they did cover the five points against Philly. So I'll let you have first crack at this one. Okay. I had Arizona and the points. So as you said, we got the win. But Arizona might have had the win, period, if Murray – listen, a quarterback – to stay uninjured or not injured or stay safe has to slide now and then. However, if you're one yard away from a first down, you have to try for that first down. I'm sorry. He's, he slides early and they missed the, And of course they missed the uh, field goal. And, and you can't do that. If you're a top notch quarterback, you know, they had in his contract, there was a lot of consternation. Hey, how dare you ask him to, read and, and do things like this. Well, he's not a thinking quarterback. I'm sorry. I mean, it's like if you're a running back, you make that first down. At that point, he was no longer a quarterback. He was a halfback. He was a running back. You have to make the first down. Instead, they missed the field goal and they lose the game. They do cover. Congratulations. But the point is, as far as his teammates are concerned, they're not going to say this out loud, but you know what they're thinking in the locker room. Take it, take it from there. Yep, the morale is very low after that game, and uh, uh, they should they should take uh, a look at themselves. I, I'm not I'm not happy with the coach at Arizona either. I mean, uh, Kingsbury. You'd think, you'd think if he could, you know, he's got all this talent here. Make him play together a little bit here. Yeah, that was a pathetic game. Philadelphia is a good football team, and everybody keeps telling me they're the best team in the league. But in this situation here, Arizona should have beat them last week. And they didn't just because of the bonehead play. So in this matchup, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to take Seattle at home. Maybe a, a bad sign, but look, I'm getting points, three points. May even be more than that come game time. On a team that's played well on the road twice over the last two weeks, I'm taking Seattle. Plus the three. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the over fifty. And it's, right now it's even under fifty, but I think it's, it might go up. I think both teams will score at will. And you got to remember that Seattle's uh, wide receivers. Uh, if you take a look at Metcalf and company and Lockett, uh, among the best combo uh, in this league. So I don't think Arizona's going to stop them defensively. So I think it's going to go over uh, fifty. But as far as the one way or the other is uh, who's going to win. I don't know. Seattle finds a way to lose. Arizona finds a way to lose. I, it might be a fun game to watch uh, because they, and it might be a fun game to play fantasy because you might uh, play a few of these guys uh, on both clubs because uh, they might, uh, you know, score 55 or 60 points in this encounter. I like that. I like that. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. <laughs> the play here is the over. There's no doubt. They will both score a lot of points. The total started at 47, went to 51. So the wise guys agree with us on this one. So I'm playing the over on this one, too. I'm going to take Seattle on a slight, but the over is the play in that game. Don't go away. Football Forecast Weekly will be right back. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. 
Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with a best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now. 800-923-6956. 800-923-6956. 800-923-6956. That's 800-923-6956. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, Call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. I'm Dennis Tobler, and I want to talk to you for a minute about how gambling in America became legal. I am the executive producer of a documentary that's won many film festivals called Now Place Your Bets, The History of Sports Betting in America. Now, the history of sports betting in America is a long, hard tale about how it became legal. It just did not become legal over the last few years without the efforts of the many who came before. The documentary documents this, 120 years of betting history, all in one film. So look it up, Google it. It's on Amazon Prime Video. Now place your bets, the history of sports betting in America. And you can also get it by going to nowplaceyourbets.com. And we have DVDs available for you. So at your first time you get a chance, make sure you watch this documentary on how sports betting became legalized in America. It was a long, tough go, but we got it done. And the people who made it get done are well documented in this film. So take the time to watch it. Until next week, thank you. Life's all about sizing up your chances. You take the good with the bad, figure out your odds, and choose a path you think will take you further ahead than you were when you started. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. If you lose, you just pick yourself up and try again. The only reason you play is to win. The only reason you gamble is to win. Sports and sports gambling go hand in hand. And with the evolution of more leisure time, more disposable income, etc., it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. If you get 100 gamblers in a room, they range from 21 to 91. They range from men to women, black to white, Catholic to Muslim. They range from whatever you like. Everybody bets the games, I mean, one way or another. Yeah, I want to be on the top of the new generation. More people play on sports than poker. You know, you go to an office on a Friday night to work, a corporate nine to five job, they're not playing cards. They're talking fantasy football and they're saying, let's do the parlay cards. Everybody bets. The program you are about to see is an intelligent, informative discussion of football. The explosion of offshore sports betting came about almost overnight, in the blink of an eye. There's so much innovation and it's changing constantly. Esports, it's brand new, and now it's absolutely booming. Have you ever wondered how sports betting became so popular? Here's how.
Uh, moving on down, here's a very important matchup, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this one. The Buffalo Bills are at Kansas City. Last week's line on this game was a pick. When they opened up the numbers this week, Buffalo opens a three-point road favorite over Kansas City at Kansas City. Have at it. Well, right now, obviously, these are – Along well, I think these are the two best teams in the National Football League at this moment. I'm not going against Mahomes, even though Josh Allen threw for 340 something yards in the first half last week and 424 in the game. I'm still taking Kansas City, fortunate to win on Monday night, but I think that's going to help the morale. And Mahomes did not. Mahomes had a good but not great game. Obviously, the four touchdown passes uh, uh, look good and everything like that. I, I, I'm going to take Kansas City, take Kansas City at home. And uh, the crowd obviously goes nuts uh, uh, for their Chiefs. So I'm going to take Kansas City. But again, these two teams will be around near the end of the season in the playoffs. We both know that. Yeah, I agree with them being around at the end of the season. But I do not agree with Kansas City. I'm telling you right now, and I've told everybody for 10 years, Andy Reid's a horrible coach. I could have made 15 different calls during the course of that game that would have put that game away against the Raiders. And they don't do it. Then he doesn't do it. And then what did he do at the end of the game instead of getting a touchdown, going up by eight or kicking a field goal, go up by four? He doesn't do any of that either. Look, they win the game by one point, and they're damn lucky to win it against a real lousy team, the Raiders. And the Raiders beat them there last year, too. So Kansas City's overrated. Their their coach stinks. Now, everybody can sit out there in Philadelphia land and tell me about the record he had at Philly and how they went to Super Bowl and how well he's done at Kansas City and all of this stuff. Look, the man has great talent wherever he's went to coach. And his idea of coaching is not everybody's idea of coaching. And once in a while, he wins by a fluke and by his plain talent of his players. Mahomes win the game for him, not Andy Reid. They shouldn't even have won last week. They really shouldn't even have won, you know, and they did, and they luckily beat a poor team. In this game here, I have to take the Chiefs. I'm sorry, Andy Reid, you're terrible, but I have to take the three points. They're at home. It's the biggest game of the year for both teams at this point in the season, and I'm going to take the home team here, even though I hate Andy Reid. But, you know, uh, again, you mentioned this. There's no logical reason he's up 30 to 23 that you don't go for the extra point and make up by eight. Instead, he goes for two. Now, it might have been because his substitute field goal kicker, Matt Wright, had missed a short field goal. Maybe he thought he might miss the extra point. But Maybe. Outside, Maybe. outside of that, outside of that, there was no logical reason. And they were talking on the ga a game, Troy and, and Joe, about, well, we give them a uh, two score advantage. No coach. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. I mean, you, you don't jump, you put the pressure on the other club by being up by eight. Yeah. If you're up by eight, the Raiders have to do everything exactly right. They have to score the touchdown and then they, they have, have to score, score the two point conversion. Right. And, and, and with Andy be going for the two and missing it, he put the Raiders in an opportunity to win. However, with the uh, McDaniels, who blew it, uh, right. the, the one-point victory for the for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was pathetic on both ends of the uh, in that Kansas City game. And I'll never, you know, I'll never think Andy Reid deserves the pay he gets. All right, the Sunday night matchup this week, big one, Dallas Cowboys at the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is a big game in the NFC, that's for sure. The Cowboys destroyed the Rams. Their defense is playing awesome. Cooper... Rush is one of the better quarterbacks Dallas has seen down there in years. He's so much better than Dak Prescott. If they play Dak Prescott in this game, I'm going to load up on Philadelphia. The minute they put Zach Prescott, Dak Prescott, or whatever his name is, back into the starting position, I'm going to load up on the opposite team because I've watched him for five years fail and then get hurt. And, and that isn't what Cooper Rush does. Cooper Rush wins the ball game. He doesn't make mistakes. He plays well. And that Dallas defense is very impressive. So we're going to see this week 
The line started at six, went to five, went to four and a half after Dallas's great game last week. The total's down to 42 here. We will see if the wise guys are right about Philadelphia being one of the better teams in the league this weekend because they got their chance to prove it. I'm, I'm not going to – I don't have much of an opinion on this game, but if I had to take anybody, I'd take the Cowboys plus the points. Well, I would lean the other way. The Cowboys had to be sky high in Southern California to beat the Rams. Now they've got to be on the road again against a good Philadelphia team. Hertz is playing out of this world. Uh, you know, they rated the 32 quarterbacks in a couple of the uh, uh, Yahoo and a couple of the other places. And uh, he's now the third or fourth or fifth best quarterback in the National Football League off of this season. I don't think a lot of people expected that. They have an awful lot of ways to score. Again, the Cowboys sky high against the Rams, but the Rams have no offensive line. Philadelphia does. They'll be out protect Hurts. So one way or the other, I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia on the Sunday night encounter. Well, you make a very good point there, that's for sure. Um, and, and it will be a tough game. Uh, Philadelphia, they can score if, if they can just get out there and get it done. I, I, it's just so close to call on this one. I, I have to take the points, but I, I understand your position on it. And our final game this week, and it's a Monday night game, uh, and also, it's a team that we're well, <laughs> well versed on. The Denver Broncos versus the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers opened at six. They're down to four and a half. God only knows why. And uh, the total here has went down from 47 to 45 and a half. God only knows why. So why don't you tell us? I think there'll be 55 points or more scored in this game. Russell Wilson had a shot in the arm. That may give him a shot in the arm. Obviously, he's got the receivers. You know, he's a very competitive guy, and he knows he hasn't been playing well. I just have a hunch he just might against a weak Charger defense. And, again, the Chargers uh, have uh, – let's go Brandon Staley and uh, not one of the better coaches in the league. Keenan Allen probably going to miss this one again for San, Diego, uh, for San Diego, for Los Angeles, the Chargers. So I think the overs to play in this circumstance – I think it'll be an exciting game to watch because there'll be a lot of points scored. I think uh, uh, Russell Wilson will be better off. He has a torn lab lath muscle in his shoulder, and if he gets shot for that, he will be able to throw a little better than he's been able to do. He's hurt, been hurt really bad last two games. I think he will be better for this game and play a little better. However, I don't think it'll affect the outcome. I think they'll score some points. I agree with you. The total 45 and a half, far too low, going the wrong direction. It's based on prior games, not on actual statistics or money movements yet. So uh, I believe the over is a really strong play on Monday night. I'm going to take the Chargers here. I'm going to take your man Eckler. So I think he can run for another 150 yards against the Broncos. And once he runs for 150 yards, then that opens it up for Herbert and he can toss all day long. I think this is going to be an excellent game to watch because of the terrible quality of the coaching. I mean, we're <laughs> going to see so many strange things in this Monday night game. You better hold your breath if you're betting real money on it. So I'm taking the Chargers. I'm laying the points. Once again, Fred's on Denver on the Monday night game. So we'll have to we'll have to uh, parse it I'm out. Not, I'm not on game. Denver. I'm, I'm not on Denver. I'm on the over. You're on the over. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. You did tell us, though, a lot about Russell, which was helpful and does give Denver a shot at covering a number in this game, though. So, yeah, you're right. The overs are best play probably of the week from this game here. And uh, uh, let's hope that uh, this week brings us as many winners as last week did. And for all of you out there, I want to wish you good luck. Fred, do you have any parting words? Uh, back to college football. I hope Brian Kelly loses every week. <laughs> okay. LSU. I, I hope the I hope the college game gets a little bit more predictable because at this point in this in the year, the big teams playing the small schools like Alabama and Clemson and Georgia playing against nobody every week. Maybe we'll have a different outcome if Kentucky can upset Alabama. I agree with you. 
I just don't like the ratings in the uh, college football ranks. And next week, we may have our host back and take us through the show in a little smoother quality. But until that time, I want to thank Fred Wallen very much for all your insights and information. This is Dennis Tobler. We'll be back again next week with Football Forecast Weekly right here on this station.